and so they end up getting petrified. And then the Bible says in Psalm 104, the mountains arose, the valleys sank down, and uh, the petrified climbs on top of Mount Everest are absolutely no problem for my worldview. Next question is for Ken Hoven, Dr. Ken Hoven. Please explain the assumptions in carbon-14 dating. I have about, so, who knows, five or six or 7,000 slides in my presentation. So it would really help if you ask the questions in the same order that I have the same in the answers, you know. <laughs> uh, carbon dating is based on quite a few obvious assumptions. Um, I'll give you a quick analogy. I cover this for an hour on video number seven, if you want to get the good detail. If I asked you to fill a barrel with water, but I had drilled holes in the barrel, while you're filling it, it's leaking. At some point, you're going to reach a stage called equilibrium. You can't fill it past that point unless you speed up the intake or cut down the outgo. The atmosphere is receiving carbon-14. It's actually being manufactured by radiation striking nitrogen, and it's turning it into carbon-14, which is a radioactive isotope, unstable, lasts 5,730 years, according to most uh, scientists. Well, at some point, the Earth's atmosphere would have to reach equilibrium. If, if you just created a brand new planet Earth, stuck it out there, poof, got it spinning around the sun. Willard Libby did quite a bit of study on this. He invented carbon dating. And they said it would take about 30,000 years for the atmosphere to reach equilibrium. In other words, it's create, being created and being destroyed simultaneously. So within 30,000 years, the atmosphere would equalize. Then Willard Libby said, well, we know the Earth is millions of years old. Mistake number one. Therefore, we can ignore the equilibrium problem. Mistake number two. Earth's atmosphere has still not reached equilibrium. Radiocarbon is forming 28 to 37 percent faster than it's decaying. Carbon dating is an excellent proof the Earth is less than 30,000 years old, probably much less than 30,000 years old. Uh, when you go to date animals to test their age with carbon dating, you get really wild numbers. I don't have time to go through all the other assumptions based on like the rate of burn, et cetera. Uh, but I can just give you a few examples showing you that it doesn't work. Living mollusk shells, carbon dated 2,300 years old. Freshly killed seal, carbon dated 1,300 years old. Shells from living snails, carbon dated 27,000 years old. This guy said, if a carbon date supports our theories, we put it in the main text. If it does not entirely contradict them, we put it in a footnote. If it's completely out of date, we just drop it. Um, here's, uh, this guy says, no matter how useful it is, the radiocarbon method is still not capable of yielding accurate and reliable results. There are gross discrepancies. The chronology is uneven and relative, and the accepted dates are actually selected dates. The whole blessed thing is nothing but 13th century alchemy. It all depends upon which funny paper you read. Here's one part of a mammoth, 29,000 years old, another part's 44,000, same animal. That's a slow birth. 30 seconds. This, well, we could talk here a long time, uh, geologic column, uh, no, here's, okay. The lower leg of a mammoth dated 15,000 years old, the skin was 21,000. It just doesn't work. I'm sorry, it doesn't work, thank you. Dr. Trivers. Yes, I'll just simply urge you who are interested in the latest set of lies from a liar for Jesus, go to www.talkorigins.org and that'll give you references also uh, to the literature that he's uh, very selectively and in some cases uh, grossly and accurately referring to. I don't have any more uh, to say about that. Question for Dr. Trivers. As a scientist myself, I would like to hear evolution's explanation for trees that stick vertically up through many sedimentary layers that evolution says were deposited over millions of years. Uh, I don't know the phenomenon you're referring to. Fossil? Oh, oh, my Lord. Oh, my God. He doesn't know a phenomenon, but I'm honest. That's all I got to say. I don't know the phenomenon he's referring to. All right, I do understand the phenomena, and I'm honest too, and I resent being called a liar tonight. I'd like you to be specific if you have another lie. You give me one at a time, and I'll handle it. You're a liar when you say no one has found a single beneficial mutation. You're a liar when you're Dr. saying that someone with a beneficial mutation has to with someone else with a beneficial mutation. That's a specific example. That's two examples. We will get back to that if time permits. Uh, I would like to...
beneficial mutation. The textbooks will teach the kids that the layers of strata are different ages. This is taught uniformly all over the world that the layers are different ages. And yet all over the world, in Germany, France, British Isles, Nova Scotia, California, and several eastern states, petrified trees are found in the vertical position running through multiple rock layers. Yellowstone has 27 consecutive layers of these trees at Specimen Ridge. Standing trees in the petrified, petrified trees in the standing position running through multiple rock layers is proof positive the layers are not millions of years different in age. In central Alabama, there's a large coal field right there. You can talk to Dr. McDonald, who's a geologist who works there in that coal field, and he will show you dozens of petrified trees that were found standing up running through multiple rock layers. The kids have been taught for years that the Blue Creek and the Mary Lee Formation are different ages, and yet when you put all the fossils together, you get sample A, B, C, D, E, F, G, you can prove positively those layers formed quickly. Uh, petrified trees 30 feet tall found in Cookville, Tennessee, standing up. Joggins, Nova Scotia is famous for its petrified trees in the vertical position. They're called polystrata fossils. Why students are taught, why people are allowed to teach that each of those rock strata are a different age, I don't know, but they are not. It is not common sense. Um, sometimes the trees are upside down running through many rock layers. Well, they is? are not, the rock layers are not different ages, but the whole theory of evolution rests on the assumption that the geologic column is accurate. And that was proven, that was developed by Charles Lyell and others back in the 1830s, way before there ever was a carbon dating, asking argon dating, or rubidium strontium dating, or any other thing else. Okay? Okay, next. Next question is for Dr. Hoven. The Avimimus is a bird-like dinosaur that supposedly had feathers. How would you discount this as traditional, uh, transitional proof for evolution from reptiles to birds? Okay, the question, did dinosaurs become birds? Uh, the Bible says God made the fowl on day five, he made the reptiles on day six. Evolution theory is exactly the opposite. Reptiles came first and then birds. This guy says scientists are alive, dinosaurs are alive as birds. It's absurd. Uh, 99, the National, or USA Today published an article about the missing link was discovered. National Geographic, the missing link, breaking news, we found the proof for evolution. Had a big article about it in November 99. Two months later, oops, it was a fraud. Somebody, some guy in China made this thing and sold it to the Americans for a lot of money. Proven wrong, we could go spend a long time on this one if you'd like, on this. Uh, dinosaurs, the birds, the descendants of dinosaurs. All you gotta do is add a few feathers and say, man, it, go ahead, it won't hurt too much. Give it a try, okay? <laughs> there are millions of differences. Uh, Alan Fiducia is probably one of the world's experts on birds. He believes in evolution strongly, UNC Chapel Hill. He said, paleontologists tried to turn Archaeopteryx into an earthbound feathered dinosaur, but it's not, it's a bird, it's a perching bird. Archaeopteryx uh, had claws on its wings, and they say that's a missing link. We don't have time to cover all this today, but there's an awful lot of evidence that uh, the one you mentioned here, uh, I think I have stuff on that one too. I have most of the things in here. Um, Archaeopteryx, and none of these can be missing links, fully formed birds are found in rock layers dated by the evolutionists at 130 million years old. How could they evolve from dinosaurs? Dinosaurs lived and died, according to their theory, 65 million years ago. Here's 140 million year old birds found, much older than Archaeopteryx. Fossil remains of a bird 142 to 137 million years old. Uh, so it could not possibly be a descendant. Uh, this guy, Fiducia, says, uh, I'm sorry, Geo Times 96 model, uh, says there are plenty of other reasons to refute the dinosaur bird connection, says Fiducia. How do you derive birds from a heavy earthbound bipedal reptile that has a deep body, a heavy balancing tail, and four shortened limbs? He said biophysically it's impossible. Lungs are totally different. Modern birds are found in layers lower than and with the dinosaurs. Scales and feathers attach differently to the body. They come from different genes on the chromosomes. Birds have a four-chambered heart. Most reptiles have three. Birds lay a calcium-covered egg. Reptiles lay generally a leather egg. There simply is no fossil evidence of how a reptile changed to a bird. Now, if you want to believe that, you just enjoy yourself, but that's a religion. Keep it out of our schools, please. Question for Dr. Hoban. The 24-hour day 